no, I'd rather just All right, guys. We shall begin. Okay, so the fourth way is uh, it's pretty interesting. I think it's argued as, you know, not – especially in the world today as far as, like, how um, – subjective we are and how relative we are. I think a lot of times it, it's, it's argued a lot by the, by the modern world, but I think it actually, when you think about it a lot more, it actually, it plays on one, two, and three, but it, with a couple of examples, I think it starts to make a lot more sense. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read the fourth way. Uh, the fourth way is taken from the gradation to be found in things. Among beings, there are some more and some less good, true, noble, and the like, but more and less are predicated of different things according as they resemble in their different ways something which is the maximum as a thing is said to be hotter according as it is more nearly as it more nearly resembles that which is hottest so that there is something which is truest something best something noblest and consequently something which is utter, something which is which is uttermost being for those things that are greatest in truth are greatest in being as it is written in metaphysics too now the maximum in any genus is the cause of all in that genus as fire which is the maximum heat is the cause of all hot things Therefore, there must also be something which is to all beings the cause of their being, goodness, and every other perfection, and this we call God. Yeah, so once again, as Pagel said, like, if you can read that the first time, be like, oh, yeah, totally get it, then um, you should be teaching this. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through it. And, I, you know, I talked with Adam about this yesterday, and, and he kind of explained, I should probably explain a little bit more on the gradation of, of just the idea of how we can say that something is something is better, right? Something is more good. Something is more perfect. Something is more true. Um, and there's, there's pretty good examples. Like, um, it's like take in this universe, rocks, plants, and humans, like in the relative world, some people would be like, well, you know, like Harambe, why should he have died instead of that guy? And, you know, in the zoo, right? It's like those things of like, what makes the human soul better than that of the gorilla. Right. Um, so I think if we, if we think about it in, in Aquinas's terms, to be is better than not to be right. That's a Shakespeare, right? Um, <laughs> But to be more, but to be more is to be closer to perfection. It's like the idea of being, right? As as we've kind of heard from from Adam and Brian in these past couple of weeks, um, being is in the sense of more perfection. As the more we can act, the the more perfect we are, right? So the more powerfully a thing can act, the more perfection it has, and the more actuality it has, the more being it has. Because to act in some way is to exist in some way. Um, so therefore, like if, if we take the idea of rock, plants, animals, and humans, right, um, a rock is, is restricted in the confines of its own matter, right, in the sense of like it is just a rock. It, it cannot move itself. It cannot do anything but just sit. But it is still good because it exists rather than to not exist. Um, now, a plant has the ability to grow, to adapt, to, to even reproduce. What's that? Sorry, I just said to photosynthesize. To photosynthesize, yeah, to eat, yeah, to make its own food. So, so therefore, a plant can act in a better way and, and therefore be in more ways than a rock and is, and is in that way more true and more perfect. Um, now, animals can experience emotions. They can have preferences, right? They can, they can act in much more ways. They can move. They can, they can really, in some ways, choose their own preferences, their own desires and urges, right? And then fourth for humans like we have a rational intellect which allows us to choose something outside of ourself right not only our urges or our emotions or things like that but something outside of ourself which then as we'll continue to say like something outside of ourself which is being itself or transcendentals which would therefore make us more perfect or choosing something outside which is the most perfect thing that we call god um I mean, a good example had to throw some rugby in there. We can choose to do extra mumas to pursue a higher perfection, you know, more fitness, more things like that. That's obviously that we can do it until the point where we are more exhausted and they can still continue to do those things. Whereas it would only benefit something outside of ourselves, such as, you know, maybe a D3 championship. You never know, right? Um, so like that, that idea to choose things outside of ourselves, which would not maybe necessarily benefit us in the short term, um, which therefore our rational intellect would would make us more perfect than the animals. I mean, are there any questions with the idea of that? If Muma could do extra Mumas, would they be a sufficient enough Mumas to be just standard of Muma? <laughs> How much wood could wood chuck? <laughs> um, um, Muma is a more perfect record player than any of us. <laughs> Um, so, so then we'll move on to the second part in the sense of the maximum of 
a genus is the cause of all within that genus. Now his example, he kind of uses Aristotelian science as like the elemental science. So, you know, earth, wind, fire, water. Um, but he says that fire is the source of all things hot, which we know <laughs> is not the case now. But uh, so it's, it's bad science, which I mean, can't really blame him. He was what, 13th century? Yeah, it's the best science of the day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but I did find an example that says the distance of things from a fire. So if you use that in the sense of like, so say there's a fire and there are things which don't naturally produce heat, but they can hold heat or they can have heat as part of, like just they participate in it. So say you have a fire and then you have something that's fairly close, something further away, something further away. Now they would be hotter and therefore resemble fire better and be more hot just because they are closer to fire. Therefore, we would say almost in that sense, like if it was goodness, it would be more perfect or more hot to be closer to that fire, right? So if we think about it in that sense of being, right? God has, God is existence itself. He is being itself. Now for us to have more participation in being, as we just explained, like that ability to act and the more act, actuality we have, the ability to act, it makes us exist more, have the more possibility to have more existence. Then therefore it's almost like the idea of we're closer to the fire, right? Um, so any, all that is not perfect being only participates in the being, which with God gave us or created us in, <clears throat> and therefore requires a source of being that is existence itself. So because we can only participate in it, we would need that fire, which would then for make us hot. So as we are, as we are being, we would therefore need being to participate in itself, which we call God. Um, I mean, that's kind of like his argument in that sense. And now we can kind of move on to what it has to do with us. Um, so we've been given like the, the gift or the ability, like I said, with the humans to, to seek out transcendental things due to our rational intellect, you know, choosing extra moon miles, right? But really ultimately seeking God seeking <laughs> to go up and above ourselves to, to more perfect. So <clears throat> to more perfection. So our wills allow us to reach a higher potential of being because we can choose and seek something outside of ourselves, that which is perfect being, which we call God. So the choice to pursue that which is good over that which is just you know immediately pleasurable for us, right? That rational intellect allows us to do that. And then honestly, I think that what really comes into play here is we can almost choose an immediate suffering, right? Or as Christianity would call us to choose death, death of ourselves to something greater. And Christ redeemed that in the sense that to allow us to join in with him into his perfection, into his ultimate divinity, right? He brings, he joined into our uh, he basically joined into our human imperfection to allow us to join into his divinity by redeeming that suffering, allowing us to join in his higher being. Um, and then good old Adam gave me the uh, catechism paragraph 33 here to, to use um, the human person with his openness to truth, beauty, his sense of moral goodness, his freedom and the voice of his conscience with his longings for the infinite and for happiness man questions himself about God's existence. In all this, he discerns signs of his spiritual soul. The soul, the seed of eternity we bear in ourselves, irreducible to merely material, can have its origin only in God. So the idea that we can continue to seek being, which is more than ourselves, shows that we can only have an origin in something that is ultimately being itself. And that's pretty much it. Sorry, went pretty quick, but... Oh, it's really good. Yeah, the soul, the seed of eternity, are are one piece of necessary. Being. That's right, our necessary being, right there. Thank you, Pagel, for leading up to this. Yeah. <laughs> well, questions, discussions. So, um, this whole order of things into perfection or imperfection implies like a certain end to everything. Everything is for a certain purpose. So, the teleological teleological standpoint or viewpoint. If you take away that and you, it, does this still hold or is it? Well, this isn't trying Sorry, to get, you're, you're, finish your question. Yeah, good. Yeah. I was gonna say, okay. The only thing I would say to this is, <clears throat> I'm assuming you re listened to uh, Frad's interview. I did re listen to it, but I remember a lot. I was re listening, but he, he brings up the Harambe issue, right? The, and so Matt Frad, <laughs> I didn't know he brought up the Harambe Episode 122, <laughs> I learned yesterday. <laughs> um, it's, it's basically, he's interviewing a uh, uh, professor about the fourth way, and he worked closely with Dr. Edward Fazer or whatever. But he talks about Harambe, and he's like, 
regardless, if, if we take away the telos, right, or teleology, teleology the end things, right, it's a Greek word meaning kind of the end, or eschaton in, in Greek as well, like, you know, anyway, um, even if we take away and we look at kind of a relativistic culture, which says, like, there is no end to this, there's, there's nothing that we're actually moving toward, you could pull and, and pull anyone, unless you get some crazy, like, PETA, are you still recording? <laughs> yes. <laughs> No job. Um, to say, can cut that do out. we see more value in the life of the child who was saved or in Harambe, right? Why mm. was the choice to kill the gorilla to save the child? And I think there is, I mean, we talk about natural law, you can go any direction with this. Yeah. But I think even without the end of seeking after perfection or recognizing truth, beauty, and goodness as the ultimate end in these kind of transcendental realities that speak to and point to this eternal soul that we've been created or what we have this sense for right but even if you have no religious background even if you have no desire for the end things there still is a natural gradation that we experience and it's not just because we're you know colonizing powerful mm -hmm. you know seeking humans and we try to dominate over everything but we do have a dominion right but and i think there is just a natural understanding and a natural reality without the the end that we might have as christians or as catholics right to understand there is something at work here deeper than us right there is reality that like no we can cut down the plants to build the home to shelter the humans right. because that is a higher good because there is a level of perfection and a level of dignity um that nice. exists no bill. with higher perfection well yeah, in, i would i would in, agree in the 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 proof itself is, or the, the way is simply arguing that there must be a God because you must have gradation in everything, that, that something must be more perfect than this until you get to the uttermost, right? And so it's simply, a, it, it is, an, it is a, an argument for the existence of, of God. It does not necessarily in and of itself argue that you must seek to be like that. It is human nature or for us to find that is the best thing to seek to. It is something more perfect than what we are. So let's seek that. That is a, hopefully a human desire, but that's not, that is not necessary. The, the intent to, to, to <clears throat> try to be like it more like that right. is not necessary for this proof to show the existence so that, of God. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I guess, well, oh, I was going to say, yeah, I, I would agree in the sense that like, yeah, the religious background or the seeking God is not necessary to prove objectively that there is more value in the human life because people would look at the potentiality of, of maybe like a child growing up and a gorilla growing up and how much it could act or do in order to say that there is more value in the possibility of this child being more acting more in more in more ways than this gorilla ever could. Well, yeah, yeah. So I guess it, it's less relative to like, say, you know, another species or the Harambe example, but like, you know, for instance, if we think of a, you know, the one I've heard is like objectively, like think of a car, what makes a good car versus a bad car? So just kind of in, we have a conception of what a car is and it reliably gets us from point A to point B you know, mm. at, a, at a base minimum. That's what its purpose is. That's what its end is. That's what it's supposed to do. So there's system. better and worse like to do that. But then to take that into a human standpoint, can you define what's a more perfect or less perfect version of the human without having this conception of what a human is in a teleological standpoint and then how that your perception points you better or worse towards god in that way okay, like so you're so saying you relative that. you're not saying a relative across different yeah. things you're talking about like just across the human race can you prove right. that they're so, so more objectively like the secular better humanist type way of like we are just who we are and we're all pursuing our own like mm -hmm. ends or, or not even ends but pleasures or pursuits so, so i would i would recommend Minds of the Quinas episode one, two, two. Because I listen, I only listen to like the first it. half of this. No, because he brings this up, and there's the reality of kind of a, 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 a cross genus versus same genus, right? And so we can look mm -hmm. at a plant or a rock, and then look at another plant or another rock, right? Like what makes this rock better than that rock, or this plant better than that plant? And so um, the rocks this, with oil in them are this quantum. <laughs> <laughs> this, but there's like this quantifiable reality. When you look at something, you know, and they bring up an example of objection. He's like, well, we can say I'm taller than, maybe I don't know if I'm taller than anyone here. Uh, Guy is taller. You guys, not everyone knows Guy. Whatever. Someone is taller than this person. But does that necessarily mean that there has to be someone who's infinitely tall? 
Oh, yeah. Because that's the yeah. argument, right? So yeah. He, yeah. He, he raises his objection. Well, no, not infinitely he, tall, but tallest. There is somebody that's yeah, but, tallest. But he's saying, in the but sense of God being, being toward, itself, yeah. is there and someone so, who is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, sorry. There's, and he kind of answers it, but I didn't listen to the whole episode, so I don't know if he ever resolved <laughs> it. But the, the reality of it, he's like, we can look, regardless of with a teleo teleological, or regardless of a even like a natural or a moral law understanding of you're a better person because, you know, you or this, 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 or you are closer on the way of perfection in terms of like charity. Even if we don't have charity as the guiding point, we can still look and say like, no, this is a better, you are a better person. Mm. You are, you do, you are a more good person. But I think only in specific attributes. Well, right. But right. So like, I think that's what's most important. Well, well, and also I think, I think that also an important way to look at this, if, if you, if you're trying to apply this to, to self or trying to like where you said, what does this have to do with us? Is that is it, it less becomes a gradation or, or a view of of me being better than you or you being better than me, as opposed to me being a, a better me, me having more uh, achieving yeah, more your potential, my to potential, seek out more me. my actuality. So is is forty year old me better than thirty five year old me? Yes. Yes. Is what is forty five better? <laughs> no, no, no. Thirty five is probably better. Than forty, a <laughs> better arm. Why are we talking? Yeah, 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 yeah. What are we talking about here? Well, I guess that's your wife. Are you looking well, at fewer surgeries? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, well, this right. is right. why, and this is why it's fascinating because he, he talks about the reality of comparing two things that are similar versus the gradation that we see from like rock, plant, animal, mm, human. Yeah. And so I don't. I, I guess I don't know enough of the finest of background to say. Does the argument kind of fall apart if you just take a bunch of humans or a bunch of the same genus and say this, 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 or if it's we see and we perceive in our world levels of perfection in more of that kind of hierarchical cross genus type thing, right? Mm -hmm. He uses fire. That's one of his prime examples. So he has right. to be thinking that you can look within a species. Right? Well, so that's what's well, but he's, he's, he's talking about, right? He's but you can also define a genus that that includes us and God and includes because you can you can define that genus by by intellectual beings or rational beings and so then you say which are the better rational beings right so he chooses fire but it's he, but in the sense he's choosing he's, heat because he means he thinks, energy he, yeah he's essentially he's talking about yeah heat energy from fire so it's almost like he's trying to use transcendental things because like in that time in that science yeah. like it was one of he the was, four elements, yeah. right? It was an element, right? so i don't think he's really breaking it down to fire. that or you would have to break it down to small attributes so you could use like size strength you know all of these small things with which all groups are partaking in in a similarity to it's like humanness i guess you would have to break down into a smaller attribute right in order for it to be relatively <laughs> but but also if you use the actual gradations of being you, i think you can right but you have to say genus, and within a genus you would have you well, would have right, to, right. to say that's the, in the, the attribute, that, that, that attribute of being. perfection. And if you take the attributes of being as being so existing very, yeah, and then so and then being active having having potentiality and then being rational and then within that you can try to move up in the rational beings you get what i'm saying like there i think it's really right. easy it, i think it's, i think it's easy to find good ways to to view this and define it to, to seek the argument to seek the path but it's also i i do see danger in in the yeah misapplication of this of oh some humans are better than others kind of thing well i'm curious if you're not looking at what the what the essential what what, what is the important or essential element of being Why human is what we should focus on right. well you would have to say from what, this perspective in theology is being a rational being you want to say what separates humans from other things yeah. so then you would have to say the rational intellect so then you would have to base that goodness of the human based off the rational intellect which is then therefore choosing being or or love a lot of times because you choose love which is really the good of another person above your Yourself. So then you could actually begin to judge it based on what makes a human different from others. Like, uh, uh, and then if you're just saying humanness in general, then you're not really separating it from anything uh, else. Really that you're fine but I mean, he, he says this though, I'm 